There it is. All right, guys, we're ready to go. I'm excited to drive it. What is going on guys? Paul James here. Welcome back to the channel today. So as you guys know, I've been super busy lately. That's why my upload schedule has been kind of on and off. And uh, I told you guys that was because I was been looking at cars and you know, a, a, an opportunity came up because I really wanted to get uh, this car for a long time. I was debating between two of them. And a lot of you guys wanted to see what it was. So I'm actually gonna show you that today in this video. So that's pretty exciting. You probably already know based on the title of the video what it is. So before I give you a tour of the entire thing, um, I did kind of record the excitement of the day of like driving down to get it. It did rain later that day, so I couldn't like film this entire video the same day. Well, let's just go and pan to that clip real quick, and then I'll take you around and show you the car and explain to you how I'm basically going to let this car pay for itself. All right, guys, so we're driving. We're heading down to the city. I just saw this car. I've been wanting this, this specific car for a really long time, but we're going for this one because it's a really good deal. We're going for the BMW i8. Um, I just love the way this car looks, the way it drives. We've been, uh, we looked at a couple of them, but this one was a really good deal. So anyways, I'm excited to share with you guys the experience in the car and uh, the excitement because, you know, I know you guys are all aspiring entrepreneurs as well. And, you know, just, I want to inspire you guys to show you what's possible. And, you know, I would have never imagined like being able to do something like this. By the way, I'm paying all cash for it. No financing. Like I'm literally able to go in there and write a check which again, I never would have like imagined being possible when I first started off. So anyways, it's gonna be exciting taking you guys along with me. There it is. One hour later. All right guys, we're ready to go. Back up on the flat doors and we're ready to take off and head back home. And I'm excited to drive it, it's gonna be fun. So if you're not familiar with the i8, the cool part about the car is that, a little hard to get me in the frame here, okay there we go. The cool part about the car is that it's part electric and part gas, so if you want to drive it all electric you can, like I'm doing right now, it's all electric, otherwise there's a sports mode, and uh, once you get into the sports mode, you kind of get out of that sort of comfort driving and get into more of like, you know, the fast sport driving, which is really, really fun, the sport mode is really fun to drive. Um, but it's nice to be able, you know, when you're in a sports car like this, it's nice to be able to switch over into a comfort mode if you're taking like a trip that's kind of longer or something like that. You don't always want to be like racing around the entire time. So that's pretty nice. I like it. Um, it's also surprisingly pretty good on gas. Not really that like you care about the gas you're spending. If you're buying a car that's this much money, like gas is really the last thing on your mind, obviously, but it is still kind of a cool fact. All right, guys. So there it is. The BMW i8. I wanted to do a more thorough walkthrough of this uh, a while ago because uh, I did get it a little bit ago, um, about a week now I've had it, but it's been raining on and off here and it's just been wild. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I really like this car is quite honestly the way it looks. I mean, I just really, really love the way this car looks. I'm keeping this car in Wisconsin. You guys know I have two houses, one in Florida, one in Wisconsin, but the one in Florida is more of an investment property. We're there in the winters and then the rest of the year we're renting it out. So this car is going to stay here in Wisconsin and I was debating honestly between this car and also a Lamborghini. Uh, either a Gallardo or a Huracan. Number one, I got a really, really good deal on it. Number two is it's just a lot more practical for where I live. I live in Wisconsin, that's where we're keeping this car. And around here, like, there's not Lamborghini dealers. Like, there's just, I, I think I would have a really hard time finding someone to, that I feel comfortable with anyways, like working on it and stuff. Whereas BMW dealerships, you know, I can find a few of those around here. So it's not too big of a deal, like it's more common uh, of a, I mean, this car is not common, uh, not too common, but and BMW dealerships are pretty common around here. And, and quite frankly, I mean, this this car like is pretty unique for around this area. Like, I mean, sure, you go to California, you go to Florida, you're gonna see like sports cars like this all the time. It's like not a big deal. But around here, this thing like turns heads. Like, people will stop me. They'll they'll yell at me when I when I roll my window down. They'll yell at me and 
um, asked me questions about the car and stuff. And it's just like, I think, I'm pretty sure that this is the only one actually in this city right now. So that's pretty cool as well. Like I'm probably the only one in this city who has this car, which is awesome as well. Um, and I've just, since this car came out, I really, this has been kind of like the main two I wanted was this one and the Lamborghini. So anyways, I got a really killer deal on it. I paid all cash for it, which was amazing to do. I'll talk about that uh, throughout this video about how I was able to do that and kind of my decisions and uh, you know why I waited to get a car like this. I could have got a car like this a while ago, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you basically how this car can basically pay for itself for me because of the reason you know why I waited and you know obviously I've I've made other investments with houses, a couple of houses, and we we do have a Mercedes Benz over there as well. So it's not my first luxury car, but it's definitely my first luxury car of this caliber. You know, that's more of like the sports car. Um, and, and yeah, so it's, it's really exciting. But let me show you guys around. You know, definitely a really, really slick looking car. Um, it just, I just love the way it's like contoured and you know, it just has some really cool like features. Like I love how it like contours like that um, on the back here, like pretty awesome so the engines actually in between these two wheels uh, the back rear wheels which is pretty insane um, so that's that's pretty awesome I don't want to show my license plate so hopefully you guys kind of get the the gist of it um, and yeah I, I mean I just love the the butterfly doors it's really awesome um, that definitely gets people uh, <laughs> they're, they're like what the heck is that when they see it uh, because it's not really people aren't used to seeing this around here but yeah just a super slick ride um, and and I just I'm absolutely happy with the decision to get this um, and like I said you know all cash 100% uh, which was actually funny so funny story about paying for the car in all cash we went to the dealership and they actually did everything they could to try and negotiate with us to not pay all cash for the car like they really dead seriously wanted us to finance this car. And I'm like, I just don't understand. Like, why would you want me to finance this? Like, it doesn't benefit you at all. And they actually, I guess they do make money when they finance it because they'll finance it through BMW themselves. And then they'll make extra money on the financing. So little tip if you're trying to buy a car, like it's not really a negotiation strategy of paying all cash, like with some other things. Like some places you can go in and say, I'm gonna pay all cash. You know, let's do this, give me a deal. Not with cars because most of the time they'll actually make money on the financing and they actually were, you know, they really wanted me to finance this car and it just wasn't happening. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera here up on the boat. Hopefully the lighting is good enough. You guys can still see me. Um, and I'm gonna explain to you um, kind of like the, the logic behind why I paid all cash for this car, why I waited to get it, that whole thing. Um, and, and why I think this car basically is going to pay for itself over time and will really be an investment for me. Um, so the reason why is because I've been taking all the money that we've made like throughout the years through my online business and um, I've been taking, I've been reinvesting that money and I've been putting the money to work to in ways that it would actually go out and make me more money. So I want you to picture this. You have, you have $5, right? I, I would make investments where this dollar would go out and make me five more dollars. This dollar would go out and make me five more dollars. This dollar would go out and make me five more dollars. So that is compounding itself. Now, if I would have bought this car back when I first started making money, you know, 10 years ago, let's say, I would have gone and bought this car then. Obviously that car wasn't out then, but a sports car, okay? Like a lot of people do, right? You see a lot of people out there, they go and they buy cars like this, you know, the first time they, they make money, they go out and they buy cars like this. And that's not a very good investment. I'm gonna be flat out, straight up honest with you, not a great investment because what I did and what I recommend you do is sacrifice now, you know, sacrifice and save a little bit and invest that money into things that's actually gonna make you money. There's not very many people who are gonna be able to take a car like this and turn it into an investment. And I'll explain why I'm able to, obviously, um, when we start getting towards that point. So what I did instead was I spent my money on things that I either wasn't gonna depreciate it on or it was gonna actually make me money. So let's let's start with like my client-based business, right? I started landing local clients, started making money with them, and I started investing that money into developing software that would help me automate that business. Now, not only was that helping me in ways where I could free up my time, right? So I'm taking that money and I'm, and I'm investing a large portion of it into hiring developers and programmers. Not only is that helping me free up time so that 
I can spend more time, you know, landing more clients around other things. But I then was able to take that software and tie a yearly subscription to it and sell it to other people, right? So now I've taken the money that I've invested from making, making money off of working with clients, you know, taking on search engine optimization clients, designing websites for them, designing graphics for them, and I'm investing it into hiring programmers who are building software for me, which that software I'm then selling, you know, letting people use on a yearly fee. Um, and now I'm making money with that. So I've taken one money from one portion, temporarily stuck it into something, but then I'm getting it back out 10 times, you know, I'm tenfold, it's coming back. So then I would take that money and I would reinvest it again into building out another software, or I would reinvest it into, let's just use a YouTube channel for example, right? YouTube channel, big sacrifice for me because I had to uh, get away from a lot of the stuff I was doing um, to grow this channel, right? I had to scale back my local clients. I had to only do referrals because I couldn't handle going out and getting more clients while I was trying to run this YouTube channel. I had to just do referral based stuff, just maintain. I had to sacrifice a lot of stuff to put out videos three or four times a week. So I was, I was sacrificing stuff on that front of things, but I knew it would pay back 10 times because now look at now I've got 200,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. And that, you know, is a huge audience base. Like, I have the potential to reach a large audience. You guys might decide you want to use one of my software tools and a lot of you guys do. And that's awesome. You know, I'm able to make a big impact and help you guys out and you guys are able to buy the software. And again, it was a sacrifice to get to that point. And a lot of people don't see that bigger picture, but I saw it, you know, I had that vision of just reaching more people. And I knew that if I made a sacrifice early on, I could reach more people, help more people. And eventually, you know, that was gonna come back. I was gonna make more money over time. So now, you know, not only can I use a car like this for advertising, obviously, I can use it for making YouTube videos with, you know, having the car in it as clickbait in the thumbnails. Like that's gonna drive more views. That's gonna drive more ad revenue. So if you're in a unique position like me, where you're like a, an influencer or a YouTuber and you can like use something like this to like drive views, then absolutely, I mean, it's probably gonna pay for itself. But I highly, highly, highly recommend that you hold off on buying something like this and invest in yourself first. Invest into what you think is going to make you money. Maybe it's investing in Facebook advertising for your business or investing in YouTube ads or building out software that you can then resell. Invest it in something like that first. Um, for me, it was all of those things it was a house I'm in right now, 5,000 square foot house on the lake. We invested in that first. Then the house in Florida, which is, is a total investment, right? Because not only are we going to be vacationing there and saving money because we were going there anyways, but now we're renting it out as well, right? So we've got people who are coming and paying us um, and they're gonna be paying us for, you know, probably I would say seven months, seven, eight months out of the year basically paying for that investment for us. Then we decided to go and do something like this. So I hope that makes sense. You know, don't get caught up in like the, you know, seeing people have things and thinking like, ooh, I want that, I want that. You have to make sacrifices early on in order to really get far ahead in life. And I'm just looking out for you guys. I'm just giving you the straight truth of what I think you should do if you wanna make it far in life. And that is my best advice to you is to wait on stuff like this and until you're in a unique position where you're able to really, you know, if, if you wanna get it and, and you have a lot of extra money laying around, you know, go for it. You're, like, you're only young once, you only live once, you gotta have fun, but don't do it at the cost of your future, is all I'm saying. All right, so with that being said, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was inspiring for you. I don't show you this stuff to brag or anything like that. You know, I, I'm pretty humble, but I know also at the same time that you guys are inspired by stuff like this. You guys wanna see you know, what's possible. And I know you guys are always curious what I'm up to and what I'm doing with my time, my money, stuff like that. And that's, uh, that's it. I mean, it's pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. I'm happy I own it free and clear. Own the bends free and clear. But anyways, guys, that is the video. Smash a like on it if you're new here. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. I've got some really awesome content coming to you guys soon. I hope my autofocus on this camera wasn't annoying because I'm like looking at it in the viewfinder and it looks like it's like going in and out, in and out, in and out. But I don't know. Well, let's hope it's good. Anyways, guys, we'll see you in another video. I am Paul James. Peace out.